It is now. Hmm. Okay. Okay. What's the title? Power. Dealer says you can't run 540. That's the title? Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's what the guy straight up uh, was disclosing. Yeah, I, I need to tell him to come in here. Power Not in here, but. Pretty so much here's what happened, Aaron. A little backstory behind that. He emailed me and he, he wanted an opinion. He said he had a fuel leak and that he fixed it. And it was still leaking. So he took it to the dealer. The dealer said injector number four was bad. So they replaced the injector. They also fixed. There was the retard line that was leaking as well. Replaced injector four. Then they said, oh, injector number one is just straight dumping fuel. So we need to replace that one too. So they replaced that one. Says they drove it 17 miles. The customer makes it 25 miles and the engine blew. <gasps> they told oh him God. that they told him you can't run 540 it's too thin how did the oh my god too thin how did his engine what was what so what hang on hang on he asked them to check the oil they said yeah the oil's good when he brought it back they said it smells like diesel or it smells like fuel which coming me looking at it from the outside tells me they didn't check it the first time because if they did they would have recommended an oil change because if cylinder one was dumping as much fuel as they said then I can understand that. So now they're like, yeah, there's nothing we can do. 25 miles and then it blew. It blew. Mm -hmm. Sounds like mm -hmm. the dealer doesn't want to pay for an engine. Uh huh. Sounds highly sus. I don't know if you guys Problem are just coming is... into the show and uh, ever had this happen, uh, but we're just talking about an uh, instance where somebody was at the dealer and they straight up said that you cannot use 5W40 full synthetic diesel motor oil which is also on the cap hmm. it, i it, i got the book right here <laughs> hmm. well the yeah, 540 I mean, would man. the 540 would uh resist loss of viscosity a little bit longer than the 1030 you're gonna run 040 so i don't here here's a here's a real complicated part and a controversial part i i was talking to this about with with a customer that i have i change his oil the 540 versus the 1030. A lot of people will say that, well, is the 540 thinner than the 1030? Because it says five and five is lower than 10. Or 040. Is 040 thinner than 1030? It literally just says it's a zero. What do you think about that? Think about it. I mean, the dealership saying it's thin, and it does say it's a five, and the other one says it's ten. So, but if you 10, 30, if you look at the viscosity rating in the in the owner's handbook, it says five W forty is good from negative twenty degrees to hundred degrees. It's straight across the board. So you can use the five forty in any at any. So at the end of the day, which one's thicker? Five forty, ten thirty. Which one's thicker? It depends on the temperature, good sir. Yep. We went over this, remember? Mm -hmm. It depends on the temperature. I would it's make the two argument. Different weights. I would make the argument that the 540 is thicker than a 1030. At if not temperature. If uh, not though they're at if not they're kind of they're probably pretty close. They're pretty similar. They're they're close. I mean, yeah, 540 is a 40 weight oil and the 1030 is a 30 weight oil. And when it's cold outside, the 540 behaves like a five weight oil. And when it's cold out, the 1030 behaves like a 10 weight oil. I would argue in the that, cold. That, I would argue, I would argue that a 540 hmm. is just thicker. I'm I'm gonna 10. wreck you, dude, because that's actually how it you know is. what? Let what me, if let what me... if what if I what if I told you I have a chart that tells you the viscosity but, of every oil of, of all the weights of oil is one brand. It's got it's got a 530 listed. It's got the 1030 listed. It's got a 540 oh, listed. Oh, oh. It's got yeah. all the viscosities at temp at different temperatures. 
So I had somebody in the comments say uh, he just emailed me about what Anthony was talking about. Um, and uh, okay. uh, yeah, he What's says, his, my, is it Eduardo? Yeah, he says my Trump Yeah, that's is him. acting up. They say they said I don't know what it was in for. Uh, they said injector number one was loose. They replaced it and called me saying my truck was ready to go. 20 miles later, my engine blew up. I would like to talk to you and hear from someone that has experience from working at a dealership in types of situations. Um, uh, Eduardo, um, that uh, I, I, we need to obviously have a lot more info. Um, what I'm going to do is respond to your email with the invite from this Zoom meeting. I'm going to have you come in if you want to uh, in. Uh, accept the invite from your iPhone. Uh, it's incoming right now. We'd like to hear from directly from you. Obviously, this is uh, something that's affecting you personally. Uh, we'd like to see what kind of crap this dealer is telling you. So they're trying to leave him on the hook for a new engine, basically. And he reached out to me and he reached out to you, obviously. And they basically told him in the last email that I got, the dealer said 540 is too thin. You You shouldn't be running it. Mm, I disagree. I Literally, disagree. you can run zero forty in yeah. uh, six seven. So, yeah, it sounds like a dealer is just trying to get out of an engine because they should have done an it, oil change that they did. To me, it, exactly, it sounds like one of the, the the technicians screwed up somewhere along the line, and now they don't want to pay for it. I'm yeah. sitting and here I just, at the dealer, and they said they can't do nothing about it. Uh huh. Did you start off with they said that the fuel injector was loose? That's what he said. How does In a my... fuel injector become loose? That's six so it... seven is actually pretty common. Really? Yeah, it is common. <laughs> yeah. So in um, my... what year? It's a letter. Will... It says this is what they said. I got I got the actual technician notes right here. Customer states fuel line kept coming off passenger side, replaced, tried driving it, made it to Walmart, started making a loud noise and lost power. Truck died. Will only crank for a couple of seconds, then stop. Has fuel leak. Uh, tech. I wonder if I should call him out, but I probably won't. Installed fuel injector, installed fuel injector, verified concerns, scan DTCs, found shorted fuel injector, recommend replacing number four injector and retest. Customer approved repair. Install new injector to retest. Vehicle now runs, but is overfueling on number one injector. Customer approved replacement of number one injector and road tested 17 miles. Verified repair. That's all it says. This is the warranty repair history? That's the repair notes from today. Hmm. How many miles does it say is on this thing? Um, 207,042. Uh, mileage out was 207,058. Hmm. Sounds like what what could have happened? Didn't um didn't you say that he messed with it? He tried hmm. to fix it. Oh, well, he, he just to tried to tighten it. it. He tried to tighten it. That's all it was. Just and then I found out it says he it says the return line was broke on some of the clips. Then no, you said in. you said he tried to fix something first, and he said he couldn't, so he took it in. What was he That's doing? what I'm reading to you right now. He was just tightening <laughs> the it? The return line was broken on some of the clips, and I replaced it myself. Then I brought it to them because it kept doing it, so I wanted to make sure it was safe to drive. Then they said the injector number, was, number one was loose before I picked it up. I told them to check the oil to make sure it was right. They said they did, and supposedly it was fine. But today, for some reason, one of their techs said that the oil smells like fuel. So that tells me that they did not check the oil like I asked them to the first time. But the server, the service advisor said that they did and that it was fine. Got him. They must have huh? checked the level. And have, not really... Does he have an oil sample from his truck? No, oh, but he, he also oh, said something about... Um, Says, long story short, they call me saying that my truck is ready to be picked up. I did that. Drove out of the dealer, pulling my gooseneck. Not even 25 miles later, the engine blew. Got it towed back to the dealer, going back to number one and eight. 
messed up the bottom end. Also, they're saying that using 540 oil is too thin for my truck. Well, he's towing. That's considered severe duty. Correct. What I'm well, what I'm what I'm trying to ask is is it would it be the dealer's fault since they just fixed it and said the truck was ready to go? Supposedly, when they replaced the injector one, they had to pull out the copper washer out of the cylinder, but they never showed me the washer. It's not a good look that they're saying you can't run that oil. That's why it almost. The owner's manual allows 540 in that engine I, under those conditions. I emailed him. Yep. Yeah. It says severe duty, uh, which is basically idling over 10 minutes. Is that what it is, Cody? Uh, yeah, something like that. uh towing a lot of idling or emergency vehicle uh stuff like that like farm use things like that basically what you do every day so according to the book he's using the right oil so that Correct. claim is false and he will win that very clearly just by pulling up the page on his or put at his manual uh, it's not a good well, look how do we Steelers how do you how do you how do you Why? prove why did they even mention the crush washer to the customer? You and, know, and then not show it. A, yeah. If I take a part off, I don't go, "Hey, here's the bolt that we removed, and here's the old gasket." I, you know, there's no reason to 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 bring that up to the customer whatsoever. I know about that crush washer, and it's really easy to lose inside of the intake. <laughs> yes, it but is. Yes, there's it no is. reason to mention it to a customer if you're the dealership. That's it's almost like they're pre-programming something like, hey, whatever you think, this didn't happen. We can prove this didn't happen because I told you about it. So actually, everybody, Eduardo just uh, joined. Um, he's on his iPhone here. We got him live and in person. Uh, I am full synthetic 10W30. Tom Jizub. Um, How you doing, guys? Eduardo, hey, thanks for on, joining buddy? us, brother. How you doing, Anthony? I'm good. Did you get that email? I sent you the actual owner's manual, the PDF file. Yeah, I saw that. I just I actually received it when when the live stream started from 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 you guys, and I okay. didn't I didn't read it, but I saw I heard you talking about my truck, wow. so I was like, "This guy's yeah. right up. He's in, in the, the service Ford, department. He's in the service department right now. <laughs> <laughs> live stream. Let's, let's put is... the service manager on the live stream. Man, the yeah. the service that. manager on the live stream. Let's he he already tech. he's gone already though. They're already uh, gone. Typical. Bet, typical. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, we actually haven't even uh, mentioned it. Yeah, the 5W40 is actually on the oil cap. I know. This, this is what I told the uh, service advisor. I'm like, how can you tell me that the oil that I've been using for the last 70,000 miles is wrong when it says on the oil cap in the engine that is a recommendation from the Ford manufacturer. So how can you tell me that the oil is too thin? He said, no, you're supposed to use 15 W40. One of our uh, resident techs here who's worked on the 6.7 with us um, had mentioned, why did they tell you about this copper gasket that they had to pull out of the cylinder but couldn't couldn't show you or didn't have it? What, what was the deal with that? I don't know. They just told me whenever... Uh... They say that the, the injector, the front passenger injector, it was loose, so it was leaking oil. They say that it was moving all over the place when the engine was running. I never okay. saw that myself, to be honest with you, but I saw that diesel was running down the, uh, the valve cover. So when they called me to tell me that the injector was loose, they said that you know, they have to, they use a bore scope and they have to fish out the, uh, the copper. Out of the out injector of the, uh... bore. Mm -hmm. Yes. But they never show me any of this. Hmm. They only show me the, uh, the, um, the injector. They, they only show me a picture of the injector, uh, that they replace, but they didn't show me the, the washer or anything like that. Did they replace the injector, uh, hold down? Like the little uh, hold down bracket that kind of sandwiches the injector to when, the valve cover. Like, was it when, broke? When I when I was looking at it, it didn't seem new. They did replace the bolt because they told me that 
uh, the the Troja, the old style balls with the uh, torch. Uh huh. And it yep. went to a ten mil. There. Right, and they they put that one for the ten mil, I think. Excellent, excellent. But That's other than I that, have. I mean, when when they called me saying that the truck was ready, I told them, "Can you please check the oil to make sure it is fine?" And supposedly they did. But today, when the tow truck brought my truck back and they were running diagnostic and everything, one of the techs said that the oil smelled like like fuel and it was too thin. And then Sometimes. after, I'm sorry. I wanted to chime in real quick. Um, I, I've got a pretty good BS meter when it comes to things and the processes. Um, if they called you to tell you that the truck was ready, then that means the truck was already outside of the shop and parked and the ticket was closed and they handed the advisor the keys and said, here, I'm all done with whatever your work order said. So if it, at that point you ask them to check the oil and the advisor said, oh yeah, no problem, it's fine. That car never went back into the shop to have a technician look at the oil. That, well, that's that, that's is... not how that would happen. They they wouldn't have touched it because his only job at that point is to call you to tell you to pick up the truck. So if right, they called but... you and said, hey, it's done, and then you asked them for something else, then they wouldn't have done it. In my estimation, I, I don't I don't believe that that would have been accurate where that, that advisor would have sent the truck back into the shop to have the technician recheck the oil just because you asked. I think it's more likely that he would have told you what you wanted to hear. Oh, yeah, we already checked it. It's fine. Your truck's ready. Come pick it up. That That's what they would have done because that's the nature of that position in the dealership. They, they're not going to go back and forth between the shop and the parking lot and between the shop and the parking lot every time a phone call is made. They're not going to do that. Right, and exactly. That, this, and that's this what I'm, this what I'm thinking. Yeah. No, and this is what I'm thinking. Uh, I honestly think that they didn't check the oil. They just told me, just like you said, they, they told me what I wanted to hear, and that's it. I mean, I started the truck outside. The, when, you know, when I picked it up, the engine sounded fine. But obviously, under the load, pulling my gooseneck with a 7,000-pound load on it, going uphill on, the, on I-40, then, you know, so with diluted oil because it was full they of said your, yeah they said your oil was thin that smelled like fuel and it looked thin well it looked right. thin because it's diluted with diesel the only <laughs> exactly. way that diesel fuel is going to get into the cylinder is through the injector tip so mm. unless you had something wrong with that injector that they just put in then i can't see how what they're saying is fuel dilution just all of a sudden manifested itself from uh 200 and whatever thousand miles you got on it while it was in for service okay. it didn't dump enough diesel into the into the crankcase in 25 miles hey you said no after 25 miles yeah it didn't do that after 25 miles it was riding around and it, they did not address it in my in my opinion they didn't address it the way you asked them to I think that should have been caught. They should have checked the oil. So would my be, question to you guys is, what what should I do now? Call Ford. You you said call Ford. Yeah, yeah. You, you're not going to get anywhere at the dealership because they're giving you the runaround. Mm -hmm. So you escalate. Now you call Ford. Uh, was this done under warranty? No, no, none of it. Okay, I would still call Ford. Yeah, you, 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 you got the, a little uh, bit more traction when you have a warranty case. Because it's easier for them to justify the payout or to have something done, but you you have to escalate the situation. Because the fact of the matter is, is you had your truck in for service, they did a repair on it, and it blew up in twenty five miles. That's not that's not a good look. There is some responsibility there. It's it's not an accident. Like what happened here isn't just something that magically occurred. Would it, it be was, standard procedure okay. to change the oil right after that type of repair? Automatic. Yes. Yeah. What's, oh, what was the original complaint? Like you drove into the dealership running fine, right? Just a fuel leak? Okay, so I was coming from California and all of a sudden uh, I was on I-40, my truck lost power. I pulled over to see what was going on. I look under while the engine was running and I see fuel coming out of, I mean, like literally dripping, running down. Okay, you're painting so I was, the picture. I started, Right, I started I started looking at it with my flashlight because this was at night. 
And then I saw that the uh, return line from one of the injectors, as a matter of fact, was the uh, the second on the on the on the driver's side, second injector from the front to the back, that uh, the return tip was off. So push it back in, truck start running fine. I went, you know, I start driving again, again pulling my my trailer, and it did it again, the same the same injector. Yeah. So I realized that the, the the little tab for the return line was uh, broken. Okay. I made it to to Kingsman, Arizona, and then I bought the return fuel line from this dealership. The whole spare time. Went, Did they put it on? Right. No, no, no. I did it myself. Okay. Holy cow! Wow. Yeah, I installed the, the, I removed the upper and lower intake and, you know, all the shit that needs to be removed it, yeah, in order yeah, to, yeah, run, yeah. to run the, uh, the, the return line. Anyways, I started again and it was, it was, uh, it was still leaking uh, fuel from the front injector on the driver's side. Cylinder one. So I, I start I started oh, trying to figure five. out why it was not what keep leaking from the return. So I put a little grease on, on the O-ring on the uh, injector and the clip went right in like a butter. The leak stopped, but I came to the dealership to ask them if they can check it just to make sure that I have a, a good engine running since I'm going all the way back to Texas. And then they said, uh, well, I can, how do you say that? I can roll it, but I won't guarantee you that it's going to be looked at it today. He said, if your engine is running fine right now, I mean, I'm sure it's, it's going to be fine. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to go drive around town and see if it start acting up. Sure enough, Walmart is like half a mile away from the dealer. I didn't even make to Walmart when the truck started acting up again. I was able to literally put it on, on drive and at that speed, I make it to the parking lot at Walmart. And after that, it won't start. So I towed the truck back to the to the dealer. They checked it. And, you know, what Anthony was saying, they said that the, one of the injectors was shorted out. They replaced it. They retested again. And they saw the uh, injector number one, the old injector on the front passenger side was loose. And that's when they told me that they have to use a borescope and they fish out the uh, the copper washer. I okay. authorized for the repair. They call me saying, hey, your truck is ready. You can come pick it up. I'm like, okay, good. So he's ready to to hit on the road. He's like, well, yeah, we drove it for 70 miles and everything seems fine. So when he called me and told me that, I'm like, you know what? Can you please check the oil to make sure it's right? And he's like, okay, do you want me just to check the level? Or I'm like, just make sure the oil is 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 is, is right because um, I just need the oil change at uh, Lake Havasu previously. So it has it had a fresh oil, not even 50 miles before I dropped her off on the at the dealership. And he said, okay, that's fine. So when I picked it up, they said the oil was fine. And again. Uh, I went to pick up my wife to the to the hotel after I picked up the truck, which is like I don't know, uh, three miles away from here. Came back to this counter to fix a, a flat that I had, and then I came back to the to the dealership, pick up my trailer, and I start driving on the highway. And then not even twenty twenty one miles, I think it is, from the dealership. Boom, and you went bye bye. Hmm. Hmm. Is what's yeah, the current so now, state of the engine right now? Does it crank? It cranks, but it sounds really bad. As a matter of fact, they were able whenever they were running the uh, the test, they were able to get it running, but it sounds like crap. Like you can tell that something was damaged on the uh, inside the engine. Wow, I think I feel so, like I hear the noise in my head of what. Yes, that it, it like. was. It was like blah, 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 How, like, like yeah. a cam, like a cam ba sounded like. How, what do you guys think about, you know, the situation is where like, 
the dealer worked on it, but he worked on it as well before they worked on it. Does that come into play at all in this situation? Mm, that had really nothing to do with internal engine components. That was an external fuel leak. So I don't I know. I, could there's too, I think yeah. there's too many aggravating circumstances here to make that correlation as a defense. That line comes off for one of two reasons. It's either DEF the fuel or there's too much pressure going back into the return line. End of story. It's the only reason that return line comes off. Yep. It probably needs a fuel system. And they're just going to chuck one or two injectors at it. It probably needs a fuel system. Mm. But I, ha I have a I have a DCR on my truck though, and all the injectors were replaced in December of last year. You said you have the what on your truck? DCR. DCR. Oh wow. I have the DCR. All the injectors were replaced in December, along with the uh, fuel rail uh, on the driver side. So what do we think? We like blew the main bearings in this thing. They haven't said anything. They just check the oil. They say they did a check analysis, and it has metal in the oil. That's it. That's all they told me. Did they cut the filter open? I don't believe so because they just tried to crank it back up so they can bring it to the front. It's, it's in the shop right now. And then I asked them if they can bring it outside so I can get my stuff out of the truck. And they said, well, that we just tried, but the truck won't start now anymore. So they didn't remove the oil filter. So the truck is physically right now in, in their shop. It's not outside. Right. Hmm. It, it, won't, it won't start anymore. Hmm. I feel like you should go for a little walk and I got to go get some stuff out of my truck right now. Mm -hmm. I want to see the truck. <laughs> Let me see if I can do that. Hold on. This is a rare experience. If you guys are just tuning in, I uh, appreciate you guys for, for watching. Uh, we're dealing with a subscriber right now who uh, looks like to be out West. Um, Question, can I get some stuff out of my truck? And he oh, has experienced uh, kind of an issue um, so, with the getting over some repairs uh, done at a Ford dealer. Are, still for service. Um, are you guys coming back tomorrow? Well, I mean, I have no choice. We have to stay in a hotel, though. My truck uh, okay. engine just blew out after they uh, fix it. Oh, uh, okay. 745 to 8. We'll start yeah, they'll be here. They'll be here probably between 730 and 8 in the morning. Okay. So, I mean, if that helps, it sucks because I don't have any keys to it. a whole different apartment. We have no well, actually, the gate's open. Is it outside? No, I think it's inside the shop. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I don't have keys to the shop. Okay. Yeah, sorry. They lock up for security. No, I understand. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Wow. Mm. Having work. Wow. That, don't, mm. that sounds a little... That's suspicious. <laughs> yeah. If there's uh, no if there's no one with any authority around, they're not going to let him in. What kind of injectors were used? Uh, Bosch. Remans are new. 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 Oh. Just for some context, what kind of truck is it? Because I don't. Twenty eleven F two fifty six seven. Wow. Twenty eleven. Well, I hate to be that guy, but I have an engine. <laughs> <laughs> if, it, if, if it ends up needing it if it needs an engine i mean i i can see what i can you know try to soften the blow for you i mean yeah uh, at this point i need an engine honestly for for the truck that's what i used to do to work i do hashes with my truck though and yeah okay that's how i make my money you know yeah Absolutely. i totally understand this is by um... the way i watched your video of the cc man you're crazy <laughs> <laughs> the what? Yeah, that was fun i i blew up an engine last week that was great <laughs> that was great yeah two inspection ports <laughs> yeah well if you want to, that's how you see the best you gotta see all the way through it that's for fuel mileage that's all that was yeah better fuel economy. That's cross flow, yeah. Cross flow, ventilation. yeah cross yeah cross, cross flow ventilation <laughs> have they and given then when you, you talk go ahead Oh, no, I was gonna say. Then when you tore it down, yeah, it was, it was great. Yeah, I've always wanted to do that. I've never done that my my entire life. I've I've See, never purposely blown an engine up my entire life. That was the first one. Zoo dad just texted me. <laughs> Did he text you? Not yet. Uh 
back to your engine deal. So I didn't catch the first part of the story. So what happened with with this truck? Did it get service and then now the engine's bad? Yes, they brought it in for fuel leak and just to make sure that the engine was basically going to be safe to drive. So they run diagnostic and two injectors had to be replaced. One one of them was shorted out. Another one uh, apparently was loose and they had to fish out the uh, the copper washer out of the uh, the the piston, you know, yeah. the bore. Yeah. And mm. I authorized for the repair. They called me saying, your truck is ready. I told them, can you please check the oil before I picked up my truck to make sure the oil is fine? And supposedly they did. They came here, pick up the truck, drove away. 25, some like 25, not even 30 miles after I picked it up, the engine blew. Oh. Wow. How many miles are on this truck? 207. 200 and some, yeah. Wow. I mean, I, I, that that's not even that high for one of those. I see those with 300 all the time. How long has your DCR yeah. been installed? Uh, since uh, August of last year, which is about... 67,000 miles. Wow. I'm questioning the injectors more than anything. So does it not crank at all or does it not? Is it locked up? Like what? Is... No, no, it cranks. It won't start and it sounds like crap. Sure. It's it feels not like the main, main bearings might be messed up. Well, Either I mean... that or the rocker. Rocker. I mean, they're, the they're fishing. They're fishing a washer out of the bore. Like, out of the cylinder bore? Yeah. Out of the injector, injector bore. bore. Oh. The injector bore, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm still kind of hung up on why they would even mention that. Yeah, why would you even say that? Mm-hmm. Did they is that notated in any kind of is that written anywhere? Is, did they give you a receipt that said that they did that, or is that just an aud audio? It's implied mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm change it with an injector so it shouldn't it shouldn't have even come up i i'm I'm actually really hung up on that that doesn't make much sense at all to me i don't know if part of the workshop manual procedure is to replace the oil after doing an injector though yeah that I mean, i'm gonna see but i'm with, gonna leave the camera and see if you guys can actually read the uh i got it right here. here but with oh, you the, it, can, can you share it uh Anthony? don't don't show the dealership's information yeah on, i on the thing yeah, yeah just 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 read it um hang on let me go back to it i got it right here i was about to text it to you eric because <laughs> you were asking about it but all right it's uh this is all i was giving here we go uh the technician notes is what i read before it says customer states Fuel line kept coming off, and he's talking about the injector return line. Uh, passenger side, he replaced, tried driving it, made it to Walmart, started making a loud noise, and lost power. Truck died, will only crank for a couple of seconds, then stop, has fuel leak passenger. Uh, the tech, I really want to call him out, but it says installed part, installed part, fuel injector, fuel injector. Verified concern, scan DTCs. Found shorted fuel uh, fuel injector. Recommend replacing number four injector and retest. Customer approved repair. Installed new injector to retest. Vehicle now runs but is overfueling on number one injector. Customer approved replacement of number one injector. Road test 17 miles verified repair. That's all it right says. There. That's why I would do an oil change. Overfueling. Yep. That's why I said if it's dumping fuel like they say it is. It needs to be oil change anyways. Uh, if it's cranking, if it sounds bad while it's cranking, if an injector is not seated, it will sound terrible while it cranks, won't it? Uh, yeah, but it would be you, the injector would blow out if it wasn't, yeah. If yeah, it wasn't that, down all the way. Yeah, How but do we, we, don't, we, don't, we don't know that. How do we get it? I'm I'm wondering how we got the metal in the oil. Main bearings. Why would it, I would think it'd be rods before mains? Maybe it's, to, uh, maybe, maybe it's mains on a six seven. What'd you say, Cody? Just to Cody, just to clarify, they did not advise to do oil change. 
at all. That never came yeah. out of their mouth. I would have. Yeah. I would have. Yeah. And it's overfueling. Off. It's washing well, down the cylinders and needs oil change. Period. Well, on, on top of that, if you just check oil level and the oil level is high, you know, there's fuel in it. And it's like the first thing you do is check your oil level. Oh, there's too much oil in here. Time to do an oil change. Did they really check the oil, though? Probably not. Yeah, probably, so. probably not. Because this is what I see. You know, you called up there. Hey, you know, can you check the oil and make sure it's good? Well, what do you want us to do? Adjust a level or add to it? No, I just want you. Hey, Mikey. Hey, that guy said he wants us to check the oil. What do you mean? I just got done drive. <laughs> the oil's fine. Yeah. How many times have situations happened like that? Yeah. Uh, I'm on, I'm Especially... on my lunch. It's fine. It, it anyway, never, that is exactly I, I, what I would he said. It never happened because they pulled the car out, closed the ticket, and handed the keys to the advisor, and then he called the customer and said the truck's ready. At that point, nobody mm -hmm. else touched that car. It, I guarantee that's what happened. I'm hung up on that, and I, I think you got fed the answer that you wanted to hear when you said, hey, go check the oil. And they said, yeah, we did. It's fine, because the truck was already out of the shop. So he, if it wasn't written down in the notes that it checked oil, oil level fine, then that advisor just answered a question to the best way to finish that process. He was yeah. just trying to move it along, get the car picked up, close the ticket, and get it out of there and move on and, to something and, else. And get life. you off the phone. Yeah, because he, it, he did not bring it back into the shop that's that's like advisor suicide anyway you pull a ticket out and you hand it to the advisor then the advisor drives it back in and says please check the oil yeah. no that's not going to happen we will cut your head off for that because that's not the process of uh, of how cars go in and out of the dealership shop it would not have worked that way i i would i, I could die on that hill from my chair right now i do not believe that it got checked after he asked after mm -hmm. the ticket was closed mm-hmm that's just not how the process works. Yep. It should, but it doesn't. If if oh. you were to, uh, it, 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 you need a motor, you need a motor. If you were to have them pull the lower oil pan off, and um, what I typically see when the mains go are, you know how, what happens when you, when you, uh, slice of onion like super thin and they all just kind of stick you know all of the 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 uh i'm just using leaves because i can't think of the word i want to say all the leaves of the petals of the onion all stay together but they're all nice and super thin the same thing happens with that metal it gets so thin from tearing away from the bearing that it's just a super thin like boil yeah, yeah, almost like full of flaky pieces of metal in the pan, and it's not it's not magnetic, and it's it really looks like aluminum. Of hey, I'll send shiny. you. I'll send you a photo of exactly what it looks like because it just. Yeah, happened. I mean, if he watches my videos, he's seen them. <laughs> I, oh, I, yeah. <laughs> I just sent you. I just texted you from my work phone, Aaron. That just happened to one of mine like a week ago. Jiminy Cricks. Like you, you yeah, take, Dave, you take Dave's that right in the comments. He says at this point, it seems there isn't much you can do until tomorrow. He's right. Yeah. You guys uh, see that? Uh, mm. I'd say tomorrow you you escalate the case with management, explain your position. That's what Dave said. And, and of course, the dealership's GM. And if you don't get anywhere or they give you a runaround, that's when I would escalate the situation with Ford Corporate. Send them the link to this live okay. stream and say, I think you guys might want to watch this and tell me how you guys want to proceed. <laughs> no, I don't want to see it again. <laughs> uh, again. So this is a... Can, uh, can I, I, can I, I, I never got sued. We're good. You're, you're better at this than we are, Ray. <laughs> I, I can definitely start shit. Yeah. yeah. Can uh, I actually use this video though to... This is going to be live video, on the internet, my friend. It, it's right, live yeah. on the internet. Once right this now. is over, you yeah. can there'll be a link. We're not, and we're, not we're not um uh slandering anybody. We're talking oh. from experience. I don't know what state right. you're in. You never said what state you're in. You never said what dealer you're Arizona. in. I know you're at in a four dealer. Um, and then uh as far as I'm concerned, uh the information that uh, we're giving in you, giving in giving here oh. to you, um, you know, digest this. Let this sink in, just like Ray said, figure out your position so that when you go back to the dealership tomorrow, you know, after being rested, don't 
you know, I know this is stressful and, you know, just, you know, try to get all your ducks around, maybe take some notes so that when you go in there, you have some, um, um, hello family. Uh, you have some, uh, I'm waving, I'm saying, Hi. <laughs> what do you, what do you have in, what do you have in writing right now? As far as like, they're claiming that the oil's too thin. Is that in writing? Or is no, that they didn't verbal? give me any. Yeah, it's just ver verbal. Can, can I make a, a suggestion? Before they do anything, try to get a sample of that oil. Because if they drain that oil and try to like bury the evidence, if there's yeah. fuel, in that, if there's fuel in that oil, you'll want to get a sample of that so that you can send it to an independent lab. They'll tell you that there's fuel in it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, main thing, try not to get angry with them because they yeah, will that... definitely not want to work with you if you do that. Yeah. Yeah, They're yeah. Gonna dodge okay. you. Yeah, no nobody ever won, nobody ever wins by being a jerk. Just, you know, kill them with kindness, explain your position. Yeah, no matter facts. how rude they get, don't get angry with them. Yeah. If anything, try to make them feel bad for them being you know, jerks. Okay. Yeah. I wish you how the best weird, of luck, man. That's uh... How weird is it that they don't let them into the vehicle right now? Oh, I would be I'd, oh. I'd have uh, my uh, my right eye is twitching thinking about that situation. <laughs> to me, that's super weird. Like they're saying we don't have a key. I mean, if if it's if it's not the same building, like if it's like a, a complex and one building is service and one building is sales, I could kind of understand. If the building's locked down, it's, it's locked it's, down. Nah, yeah. no, if, if service no. is gone and there's nobody, there's no manager in charge of that building, then it's you're you're out. You just you can't get in. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't know. I, I'm sure there's somebody there that can open that building and some security. Something. I mean, yeah, yeah. The last time a salesman came into my shop and and did something to a car, he blew up a forty thousand dollar BMW. There, there's a reason they don't let different departments into other department sections because people destroy things that way because they touch yeah. things that they shouldn't it, it, be touching. And then, and then jump boxes end up missing. Yeah, yeah. You know, all kinds of stuff happens. Yeah, I get it. Yep. Okay. All right, guys. Well, uh, I really, really appreciate all the help from you guys and the advices. And thank you for listening to my sad story. No, uh, no, no problem, my friend. Keep you guys updated. Uh, you know, on the on the next live stream and see what happened. Or I just email you and Anthony, and we go from there. I guess. That's cool. That's Sounds awesome, good, man. brother. Yep. How all right, you? guys. Thank you so much. And I'm gonna right. get out of your live and continue watching you guys and. Thank you so much. I Take really care, buddy. It. Wish you luck. Yep. All right. Bye. Wow. Yeah. Man, wow. I feel bad for that guy. I wow. do too. That sucks. Like it, it's that really does suck. Like that's his method of making income. Mm -hmm. That's it's one thing if it's like your your lawnmower breaks. Like you can pay someone to cut your grass, but that's his livelihood. That is. That is sucks. What, what kind of cost is he looking at right now to get this truck up and running? Oh, minimum man. short block. Minimum short block. Labor, the can of worms, and all the gaskets and muller. I mean, easy fifteen k. I mean, twelve fifteen k. Now he goes the other route with. Uh, I do cars. complete so engine so. assembly twenty k. Uh, he gets in. The I'm, last I'm, one that I did was thirty one thousand. No, my engine, engine. My engine <laughs> has a broken timing cover and a broken. Upper oil pan, I think. No, uh, upper oil pan is good. It's got a broken timing cover, and um, there's one other a, a chipped valve cover. It's got 144,000 miles, and I could probably g do it for like 55. Why are they broken? Because the truck ran into a train, I think, or something else very big. Is the train okay? <laughs> the Holy. train. Did did you, <laughs> see, you guys? You guys, I sent you guys the the picture of the frame, right? The one. No. Where the, Oh, dude, the frame. I, I'm gonna let me give me a minute. I'm gonna oh, find. Oh, guy hit a train. Hit a freaking train. I don't, I'm guessing whatever Ooh, it hit. Hell, really bad stuff happened. But the engine survived. It has it has like it needs a couple things, but it's not anything crazy. That's it turns cool. over. It cranks perfect. I That's couldn't cool. get it started because of the situation. But the oil looked good. The level yeah. was full. So I I don't have any reason. It obviously had to run to do what it did. Wow. Let me see. Let me see if I can find this picture because that thing was. Did you, get, did you get that text there? Uh, ouch! Uh, Caught my beard. You said you, you. Why are you watching Richard Simmons now? Me, dude. I don't want to know that. Who's watching Richard Simmons? 
I'm a pony. I'm a pony. Come on now. <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, yeah, what a what a crazy uh, situation, guys! At the Ford dealership right now. That was um kind of right place at the right time i'm glad he was able to come in um and really give him uh some food uh for thought i, I hope he can uh go back to his hotel room uh, once everybody goes to sleep and maybe kind of uh, digest everything that he uh took in tonight to to write down some notes and have some some uh uh weapons and words to re cognitive his memory of uh did they check the oil um why didn't they change the oil um and you know start asking these um questions see if they're gonna they're gonna fess up do something say something this guy needs help he needs to get an engine these hot shot guys the trucks are they living he so said, I'd be it. walking around the building to see if a roll up door is open. <laughs> right. Right. Nice. Yes. Egon. The <laughs> Ghostbusters. <laughs> yes. Yes, Egon. If they check that oil, this could have been prevented. Mm, 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 mm. Maybe. See, this kind of. Why well, um, you say maybe? Well, he said he had that oil changed 50 miles before the uh, before it started leaking fuel the first time. So there's potential he was driving a good portion of that 50 miles with already diluted fuel. That's possible. You got to be objective here. And yeah. they could have it could have showed up at the dealership with bearing damage and they never caught it or noticed it. Probably just through lack of due diligence, they should have checked the oil. They should have changed the oil, and they didn't, uh, in my opinion. But, so it could have already been a dead horse it, when it pulled in the first time, mm-hmm, and then right, it, right. they didn't know. No about matter it. what, like and they could have changed away. the oil. They could have changed that oil, then it still could have happened. And but 25, it, it, 25 miles is a pretty short uh, distance to you, blow you an engine. A, I mean, you think about it though. If you got a bearing coming apart. 25 miles is a long time. Mm, I don't know. I, you can make an argument that, that maybe that would have started uh, 100 miles ago, 1,000 miles ago. Cause, My thing cause is diesel, that if it, if it was overfueling, then the oil level would have been higher than normal. Well, here's the real tricky part is what Ray was saying. Take it back to even before that oil change. What if something was going on on the previous oil that had a ton of fuel in it. He changes it. He puts 50 miles on this new oil. It's got fuel in it now. And like, we don't know how long or how, we don't know how long this has been going on. His previous oil is just no longer in the engine. This all Could really I... just goes back to the original concern, the original problem. Why did the injector line blow off? Yeah, that doesn't make that doesn't just happen unless somebody's in there. It's either pressure or DEF. Those are the only two things that cause that line to blow off because it either gets blown off from too much fuel pressure going up through it, or compression going up through the injector, or the screen gets blocked with metal or DEF. That's in the return line. That's so it. this truck, this truck had a DCR. We don't know who it, put the DCR it, on. It don't engine. matter. The injectors are injectors are aftermarket, aka Bosch. They're not Ford injectors. They're we don't know what the injector. There's a ton of stuff going on with this engine. But it comes back to the original concern: Why did the line blow off? Yep. Is it because the injector is stuck wide open? dumping fuel in therefore it would have been diluting the fuel beforehand and we should have still done an oil change anyways hmm. that's my thought 25 it's miles just with a, a wash bearing and wrong oil is equal to a lifetime yeah it's tough when there's so many things going on with this engine so many hands are in there i don't know 
it's definitely a tough situation. It is. That's a that's a uh, sad sad thing. Nathaniel, thank you. I do cars. That is one sexy E60 wagon in your last video. Love your stuff. Hi, Ray. Hi, Ron. I've Bye been trying to trans. find the thing. Mm. Six four. <laughs> yeah. The unfortunate part is we're just speculating because we don't have the truck in front of us, so we don't even know if it really needs an engine or if it's just fuel knock or. I'd love to hear like it that. crank. I'd love to hear it crank. Hey All guys, right. hope y'all see my question. I have a sixteen Chevy with an infotainment system that works when it wants to. How yeah. would I narrow down to either the radio itself or amp? Hmm. I think you should probably see if you can communicate with it in the CAN network if it's uh, when it's acting up. And whichever you're not able to talk to, that's the first place I'd look. Mr. 42960, the, uh, the steel lines are, yes, but uh, what blew off was uh, the injector return line. That's the little rubber hose that um, kind of like quick disconnects onto the injector. Um, Good explanation on the frozen cokes. Yes, that was. That was. All right. I, I put all those pictures for, of that truck when we were dismantling it in the chat. Oh, okay. I mean, I could screen share if you guys want to do that too. I don't really care. Okay, screen share is open for everybody. Okay, hold please. Yeah. I can't look at it. It says there's potential security issue detected and this file might not be safe and could harm my computer. <laughs> what, right. are you, what are you trying to do here, bro? You'll see. No, I'm Mine said the same thing. All right, hold on. Hold, hold on. Screen share. Screen share. There's uh, 200 people here. They want to see too. You must screen share. Yeah, All I right. think. Sure. All right, so here is the frame oh <laughs> just like ds's look at that thing oh. hey look <laughs> 10 millimeter i see it it's ah! right there it's right there all right hold on let me pull up some of the other stuff it's not good all right <laughs> it's not good it's it's that it, it gets worse just That's needs an alignment spring should be sitting <laughs> hey yeah. you can pull that out it's fine Damn, it ripped all those rivets out i know oh, yeah uh hold on holding I, it, it's really hard to tell what's going on there, but that's standing in front of the engine. This is the that's passenger the side, side of the trains. Yeah, yeah. There's a better look at it. Look at the look at that shock tower. I'm only seeing the first picture. Yeah, me too. What? what? <laughs> I'm like, uh, are you no, serious? This is the side of the transmission. Yeah, it's tower. just. The, yeah. We can oh. see your mouse, but I just see the bent frame rail. Ah! All right, hold on. Technology. Uh, hold on. I'll fix it. Good Lord. Oh, DS. Hey, Lake's what in up? here. What up? Just like your front end job. Damn. Damn. Holy, Holy shit, bro. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> oh, what did he hit? Oh, I hit a train. I told you it hit something bad. Look right, at the fan clutch cocked sideways. Oh, I got, I got, I got better ones. I got. Better would ones. you, would you, would you trust that engine? Yeah, it cranks over perfect, and it has the oil look good. It was full of oil. A baby. Uh, let's see. Here's a better. It's one. fine. It's fine. It'd it's be good. okay. And hopefully, this is not the same picture. It might be. Is this the same picture. Uh -huh. Oh yes, yes. Damn it. We got the same jack. Yeah, there's the damage to the front of the engine. Hold on. Hold Progressive would fix that. <laughs> Come on. You know he's got the general insurance. There's the front of the motor. Okay. 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 Needs a tensioner. It's fine. Oh, it's it just... needs a timing <sighs> cover because of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right there. Oh. It's a little boo-boo right there. Son of a biscuit. But, I mean, it, it, cranks, it, it gives all the signs of a good engine, so. That's cool. 
some compound polish will fix that. Oh yeah, <sighs> man, just rub it out. It'll buff out. <laughs> just rub it out. Put a little Lucas stabilizer in there. It'll be all right. I'll try to buff. Hmm. I'll try to buff one of these wrecks out. We'll see if we can. What's up, Mister Lake Speed? What's up, How guys? Are you today, thanks for coming in. I'm man. good. Yeah, we were can just I, talking how about. How can I be uh, of assistance this evening? We were just talking about a poor, unfortunate situation. Uh, a fellow's out west, and uh, he's got some. We're thinking, we're speculating, we're hypothesizing. It seems like he probably had some fuel dilution, maybe prior to entering the dealership, and had some work done left. And now, um, now it looks like maybe we need an engine. And they were telling him that he should not be using 5W40 in his 6.7, that it was too thin. Now, we were telling him that, you know, the 540 is on the oil cap and is listed for severe duty use in this application. And, uh, you know, Ford's guidelines for severe duty is actually pretty silly. Uh, towing a 500-pound trailer, standing at, uh, sitting at traffic lights, uh, city driving, all this constitutes as severe duty. Really? So. So pretty much uh, how you use it, any truck, like yeah. all the time. Okay, and, yeah. <laughs> and he was pulling a gooseneck, so that oh. actually classifies for se severe duty. Mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. So mm -hmm. it was kind of interesting for the the dealer uh, who was supposed to be servicing and working on these things is going to tell this customer that you know we can't be using five forty. Blah blah blah. What? 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 They're saying he should have used fifteen forty. Oh, that because that's gonna make all the difference in the world. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I struggle to to uh, to imagine that a situation where that's the difference between an engine surviving and not surviving. But that's just me. Well, what is the difference? Because I know down south they swear by the fifteen forty. It's ten, and uh, uh, up here we run the five forty. You know, I run the five forty down here. Anybody's truck. I mean, technically. The difference is, I mean, they're both 40s at um, 212 degrees Fahrenheit, but you'll have more polymer, you know, more multi-grade additive in the 5W40 than you do the 15W40. I mean, that that's the primary difference of so the base oil viscosity of the 5W40 is lower. That's how it can be a 5W, you know, be able to crank at a lower temperature. Um which is why you see that in the northern climates, and the 15W40 is more popular in the in the southern climates because they don't need it as much, and it will probably hold oil pressure better longer because it doesn't has as much polymer, so it won't break down as much. That that's the general thing, but in terms of affecting fuel dilution, it has zero impact on that. I mean, if the guy's engine failed due to a bearing failure. That's primarily going to be related in those engines to fuel dilution. And that's everything to do with injector cleanliness and zero to do with what viscosity oil you had. If you had a 15W40 in there, it might have lived a little bit longer, but you're going to kill it no matter what. It's going to die. So what a 1540 for down south, that really is a little bit more robust just because it doesn't have as much polymer. There's less polymer, yeah. So um Dandy whiteboard. Man, look it. at this guy. Oh. <laughs> oh, by the way, guys, this is Lake Speed, the motor oil geek. Uh, uh, oh, we've seen Lake, him this before. is everybody else. All right. So, for example, let's do a 0 W30, a 5 W30, and a 10 W30. Okay. So, all three of these oils are going to be, we're going to call them 10 Cinestokes. That's the one of the flow measurements. So anything between a 9.2 or a 9.3 and 12.5 Cinestokes at 100 degrees Celsius, so 212 degrees Fahrenheit, qualifies as a 30 grade. All right. So we're all going to end up here at 10 Cinestokes on the top. All right. But how we get there, that's what's going to vary. So we talk about base oil viscosity. We're talking about the viscosity of the oil 
in Cinestokes because that's the only flow measurement. SAE grades are not flow measurements, they're ranges. And the number after the W is actually a flow measurement. The number before the W is a cold cranking torque measurement, right? How easy will the crankshaft rotate over? How can, does the oil even pump at that temperature? So mm. a zero W30, the base oil viscosity might be only four centistokes. So we're having to use, we'll call it, you know, six centistokes of polymer. To can, get, I, can I, can I pause ahead. you for one second? So sure. when you look at the first number, you're not looking at the viscosity. You're looking at its ability for it to flow or its ability for it to rotate the crank. Yep. So these oils. So imagine this. So imagine. But, these, but they don't have the same viscosities at those low temperatures. Like a five weight oil, like a 5W40 and a 5W20 don't have. They, the don't, same, they do not have the same uh, flow measure, the same flow at say, let's just say it's at 10 degrees Fahrenheit. All right. At 10 degrees Fahrenheit a 5W20 will flow faster than a 5W40. So a 5W20 would have a lower viscosity. Yep. But they both would flow. They'll both flow, yeah. And rotate the crank. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people say think like, well, a five weight, regardless of what the second number is, if it's a five, that means it behaves like a five weight. And nope. it, you know, no, no. That no. viscosity but, sticks with that second number. Yeah. The vis actual viscosity is the second number. Hmm. You hear that? You hear the that? Flow, the flow number is the second number. The number so it pours, for the like W. A point. It, please uh, you call it that. I, 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 I hesitate on that. Because that's not the test. Four point is not the test for that. What they do is if you imagine this coffee cup was full of oil. And for this case, zero degree for a zero W, we chilled this cup and the oil in it down to negative 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Damn. And we put a rotor in it. And we turn the rotor and we measure the torque it takes to turn the rotor. Oh, like what my wife uses to froth, uh, mix her wine or do that yeah. little. Zzz. Yeah. A little zip. <laughs> put this thing in there and you spin it and you measure the torque it takes to turn it. As long as it is not greater than what they call 6,000 centipoise at that temperature, it's a zero W. Mm. If it's 6,001, it's a 5W. Mm. So what was your question, DS, uh, between the 1030 and the 540? No, what my thing was what you we were saying is I was saying that the oil viscosities of these oils is not the same if the first number no, is the same. No, they're not even the same as the second number because yeah. it's a range. It's a range. So, it's a range. So. So like you could have a oil that had that's you could have an oil that's got the same first number, but it's thinner mm -hmm. because it's like a five W twenty. It's way thinner than a five W forty. But well, that's at operating thinner. temperature, right? What, what you have is like at cold start. At cold so, start, it's thinner. At at operating temperature, it's thinner as well. You it's could you could five, have an oil that is we'll call it so for a five twenty five twenty. Two 520 side by side. You could have one of them that's blended toward the very top of the range. So it's right maxed out. It's almost a 30. And it could be barely making that 5W cutoff in terms of the torque test. There could be another one that's at the bottom of the grade range. And it just barely missed being a 0W. They're both 5W20s. You put them in. And one will act thinner in the oil in the engine than the other. Wow. Yeah, because it's a wide I have, range. Learned, I have learned so much in the last 10 minutes. 
Yeah. That I did not anticipate learning today. <laughs> I, I I could have used a warning because I could have pushed something else that was less important out of my head. <laughs> yeah. But I could have done a data right. dump to make a little bit of room, a little storage. Yeah, but yeah, no, I, yeah, yeah. I I I had cut you off at the part where you were talking about the oil, wrote how it's a measure of can rotational it flow torque. Cold, rotational torque, and yeah. you were going somewhere with that. Yeah, if you think about it, if it was just flow on both sides, that means all oils get thicker as they get hotter, and that all does oils not thin as they get ever. all oils thin as they get hotter. Right, they get thinner as they get hotter. Yeah. So the numbers, if you once you once you recognize, okay, yeah, all oils get thinner as they get hotter. We look at the numbers, like they don't. That doesn't make sense. There's that that, that can't be flow and flow because it's not right. flow and flow one's basically cold cranking performance and the other one is flow high temperature flow that's why the old days they called them winter grades and summer yep. grades that's where the yep. w comes from it's winter yep. Yep, I remember learning specifically what you just said yeah. in the auto class when first starting out. It's like, oh, you know, we got to switch over to that winter grade. Uh, yeah. It's getting cold yeah. outside. Yep, yep. We'll snap in the air. Yeah, Floridians get that, would get know that nothing straight about 30 that. Out, so, put just you some know. 10W in there. You'd be all right. <laughs> <laughs> but the first number was never was never related to a weight of oil. It was always oh. related to a winter flow. Views winter, winter performance yeah, weight, winter. Yeah. yeah. So weight and the second number has that, always who been knows related where it to came from. And it's stuck, yeah. and everyone uses it. How I even say it, do you know? Yeah, and it's wrong. It's there's like I can go grab my book. So I think one of the controversies it's we were having say is weight like, here anywhere. So is five forty thicker than ten thirty? Uh yeah. So that is so I guess so here so so here's the thing that I've found is I've been looking into this. I've seen like a I've seen a 540 and a 1030, and their cold performance would be very close. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe uh the 1030 would be just a hair better, maybe, or maybe the 540 could be a hair better, but they're kind of close because like one's a 30 weight, but it's only a 10. And then one's a 40 weight, it's thicker, but it's all the way down to a five. Yeah. How and it would just land. They, right. Is that 10W30? Because I mean, it's a 30. So it's going to be thinner at high temperature, right? So as they they get again, you know, they're they're thicker when it's colder, right? So if cold's on that side and hot's on this side, they're sloping downwards. Right. The, but the trick is so. You've got a 30 down here and a 40 up here. Well, that 30, when you get the in this temperature range here, it's going to act a lot thinner than the 40 does. Only yeah. when you get really, really cold will that 5W start to kind of kick in in terms of its ability to crank. But it will still be thicker if you did a flow measurement. So it'll mm. still be a 40 weight. Yeah. Yeah. It's still thicker. It mm. didn't just, it's not going to turn and go under. What's interesting <laughs> is like, happening. what's interesting <laughs> is like, it can flow, it can flow or be thicker. Like it could be thicker and not flow as, or flow. it could be thicker, but still flow better. What will happen when you get below freezing is really down to the wax, the amount of wax in the oil and how the, and that's from the base oils and how they begin to interact. And sometimes it's the age of the oil. So that will begin to affect the flow characteristics of the oil is when you get down there. So, that that's one thing that you don't really see on those high temperature flow measurements because it's so hot, right? So warm, the waxy paraffins and stuff, they don't have yep. any impact. 
uh, at that really. If anything, they kind of help hold viscosity higher. But at low temperature, they'll start to kind of work together. And the other thing is when you're talking about you know, your experience in the field is not with fresh oil. Your experience in the field is with oil that has fuel dilution. So when you start having an oil that has more biofuel in it, that biofuel is going to act different in terms of its crystalline structure, how it's going to respond. You know, so you you could have a 10W30 act way thinner than a 5W40 in the field just due to the fuel dilution that's in the engine. Because guess what? That guy that has that 10W30 has been using cold flow in his fuel and he's got fuel dilution in his oil, that cold flow will still work in his oil and help mm. the oil flow better at low temperature. I have a totally unrelated but somewhat related question. What's that? Uh, modern oils are super thin. Uh, I've seen zero W8s in a lot of normal cars, which is a scary notion. Uh, in your opinion, is are those more are those vehicles more susceptible that run that thin oil to the impacts of fuel dilution than a thicker oil? They have less safety margin. Yes. Okay. You just did a video with your daughter's car zero eight. I, d I did zero W eight. That's a thing. That's, that's a, a thing. Toyota. That's yeah. a real thing. Get out of here. It's yeah. a real zero thing. Eight. I was oh losing it when they came out with gosh. zero sixteen a few years ago, and now it, we're it down is, to yeah, zero, zero eight. eight. Toyota factory fill on like the Corollas and a bunch of stuff is 08 now. BMW is using 012. What? Yeah. I've seen so this that. stuff, does this stuff turbo return, with does zero this return 12. like, does this return really good MPG? Uh, that's, uh, this is the only reason it's out there is for fuel economy. And yeah. it's not for real world fuel economy. It's just to pass the EPA. It's just yeah. for cafe mm. standards. That's it. Yeah. So it, when you, when you, when you touch this way, oil, what, when you touch it, what does it feel like? Does it feel like it's W40? Like like does, like does, it does it feel real thin? You can tell it's real thin just by touching it. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I worked for a race team. That, that's still thick compared to some of the stuff we would run. Oh, for real? Oh, God, wow. yeah. I still want to come crits. down there and see the shop, man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, we, we, we've raced on stuff thinner than that. Great discussion tonight, everybody. Yeah, I we uh, I, I've been enlightened. That's for sure. We uh, definitely going to gonna have some avenues uh, for Eduardo. Uh, one being for Lake Speed, this wonderful information that uh, he's uh, bestowed upon us tonight, and the uh, maybe possible avenue uh, with having an engine available from uh, I Do Cars. We're going to explore that, uh, give Eduardo that information, but we want to know what the dealership is going to tell him tomorrow. I'm going to be sure to connect with him. Uh, both Anthony and myself will make sure we uh, go back and forth via the phone and, and uh, email to see uh, what in fact is going to happen uh, what's going to transpire in these uh, next couple of days here as the week uh, uh, comes to an end. And hopefully he can get back on the road because he's got his family with him and he's stuck at the dealer and he's not going to be making any money just sitting sitting yeah. dead on the road. So um, we wish him the best of luck. If he's still here, thanks for coming on, buddy. Uh, to all uh, 200 of you that have followed us uh, for over an hour, I really appreciate you guys coming through. And uh, if you guys have had this happen to you, uh, let us know in the comments. We'll be going through and um, uh, responding back to some of you guys. I know we didn't have time to answer some questions that were in the comments. So uh, big shout out to Lake Speed. Appreciate you. Uh, Ray, I do cars, CPs, Beard Fortech, and Sleepy DS that was not sleeping tonight. We thank you, everybody. <laughs> we'll, talk, we'll talk to you later.